everybody. Hi, everybody. And welcome, welcome to, to this week's <laughs> episode of Mel's fucking <laughs> food prep. Because I'm going to cook one of my recipes. Today. And I'm going to be a helper today. Because so she should gonna, be my show anyway, because yeah. I do all the work. She's going to boss me around. Do you know, I was watching, oh, yes. I was watching um, scrolling through Facebook this morning when I was walking and watching this video on Ellen. And she bought mm. this, like, little, I shared it in the Facebook group. And I always think of Mel when I watch Ellen. Love Ellen. Because she loves Ellen and she wants us to get on Ellen. I've actually emailed Ellen and mm. asking her if we can come onto her show. Mm. So I think she's vegan though. Is she vegan? She is. But she yeah. probably <laughs> doesn't seem like someone who would be judging other non-vegans. She's not judgy. No. At all. No. She would embrace our no. dairy eating, oh, yes. meat eating, mm. do you think? And we could dance. Yeah. Ellen loves to dance, and we know I love a little dance. <laughs> a little oh, oh God! <laughs> so today, what are we making, Mel? We're making Mel's coconut rough. Coconut rough. Oh, coconut yum. rough. Super, super fucking easy because you know that I don't put any effort into cooking. That's at right. All. And mm-hmm. this is um, this will be yum. Like this will be something yeah. you could have. When do you have it after for dessert? Or look, you can have it for breakfast if you like. Yeah, true, true. Any time. You yeah. don't have to have breakfast food at breakfast. That is very, very true. Yeah, there's this, no rules. This would be nice with a nice cup of tea. Oh, yeah. we love a little cup of tea. We love a little cup of tea. We love a cup of coffee as well. <laughs> yeah, coffee and tea. Uh, so, so I've got um, 200 grams of coconut. You can just get normal coconut and toast it. And we just had this in the cupboard, so yeah. we just like, what can we use up? Yeah. yeah. So coconut. Um, one tin of condensed milk, um, two blocks of this chocolate. Oh, now, you, do you reckon you could, if you also liked it, you could put some cherries in there, dried ooh, cherries yeah. and make it like cherry ripe Yeah. yeah. Oh, we should try and make cherry ripe one day. I reckon we I could. We, have we made cherry ripe before? I don't think we have. Hmm. I, I feel like we could ripe. try, hmm. don't you think? We could do anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> so on low, yeah? Yeah, that so you just want to um, mix the chocolate and the condensed the milk in, in on low. Yeah. So you're just going to let that melt, are we, first? Yes, yeah. yes, done. Yeah, yes. nice. And so what, do you just mix it all put together and then... Together. Oh, together, okay. And then you, it obviously, go, when you put it in the fridge, it goes hard again. Yeah. So yeah. what you've got to do is when this melts, chuck the um, coconut in there really quickly, mm. stir it really quickly before it starts getting hard, then put it into a lined baking tray, chuck mm. it in the fridge. Now, I put salt in mine as well. You don't have oh, to. Oh, yeah. Well, that would be I nice. Like salt. Yeah, should we put a bit of salt? Sprinkle it on after or put it in now, Mel? Um, I reckon sprinkle it on the top after. Yeah, okay. That's what I do. Yeah, nice. Yeah. So, I think we should talk today about, because yeah. um, I've had a couple of ladies this week I've mm. got on calls with mm. um, that are really, you know, like want an 8 out of 10 result. And I'm like, well, Craig and I were talking about this before. Mm. You should be wanting a, like a 15 out of 10 mm. result when mm-hmm. you start this program. Um, I'm doing everything I possibly can. I'm still drinking and I'm still smoking. <laughs> so <laughs> I've asked them, what what do you want to do? What what do you want to be like? I want to be like you and Kitty. I said, well, do Kitty and I drink and smoke? We used to. Yes. We, we, we used, used to. to. But do Not anymore. things that person does like I wanted to be like Kitty so I started oh, doing not she started be, she started no. being, being consistent yeah oh it's like this consistency yeah. thing works it, it really does work remember that day yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes I think I think though too like women have this um and it's it's a bit of an un, well, it's not unrealistic but like when they think about the idea of going all in and being 100% committed to them, I think sometimes, or to you, it can sometimes, you think that you need to be perfect. And when you're not perfect, then, you know, the old saying, throw the baby out with the dishwater, is that what yeah. it is? Is that what it's saying? Bath water. Throw out with the baby? Yeah. Yeah. Something oh, fuck, I don't know. Yeah. Or, you know, like, <laughs> one, you got one flat tire, so you just slash all the rest. Mm-hmm. You know, and I used to be like, have that mentality around food. Um, but I think a lot of it, though, was due to obviously restricting. So then when I binged, I would be like, or if I ate something off my plan, um, I would then be like, oh, fuck it, I'll just eat a whole heap of shit. But that's because my body obviously wasn't fueled. So, you know, like now, I, we eat, we'll have stuff like this in our diet. When you're eating enough sugars, when you're eating enough carbs, mm-hmm. you don't, you, when you're eating food every day that you like, that's yeah. nice, that fuels your body, you don't actually feel like binging. But, you know, shit's still going to come up. You know, like things will happen with the kids or with work and you might miss a training session or you might go out to somewhere and eat something that's mm-hmm. not so optimal and... But life it's like, happens. Life happens, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, you, no one is ever going to be perfect, but going all in doesn't mean that you be perfect. Going all no. me, in means that you are still committed 
regardless of your micro failures. Yeah. Don't you think? Exactly. Yeah, like I just, uh, I, I think, and that's where so many women go wrong is that they, they give up too easily or they, they, they try. When it gets hard, people give up. They do, yeah. they do, they do. And, you know, I think it's, you've got to ask yourself, like, what's, what's more painful? Actually knuckling down and doing the work and being consistent or staying where I am. Yeah. You know, and that might be I'm not sleeping, my period's all fucked up, you know, like, for example, you know, we always say to, to women, only take supplements on top of a really good diet and being consistent with your diet. So you don't know to like coconut? Um, no. No. There's a bit more than what we need in there yeah. anyway. So, yeah. see how it's getting Oh, yeah, thick. I'm sure. Yeah. So it's like, do you want me to hold the... Get right? it in there quick, smart. You oh, hold it, yeah. though. It's not that hard, is it? Gee, look, it goes, um, firms up really quickly, yeah. hey? Oh, God, this would be amazing. Um, but I think, you know, it, it, it's life's going to happen but you've got to be more consistent than you are inconsistent you know um, and if you do start to fall out of good habits or start falling back into bad habits it's about realigning yourself and reminding yourself about why this is important to you because yeah. obviously we all want to look better you know but if you actually you know like do the things that we talk about eat consistently you know get nutritious food into you get sun lower stress strength training get stronger you will automatically look better because your body of how you look is a reflection of your habits and what you do daily. But your habits don't mean that you restrict, you know, like I always used to think, fuck, to look good, I've just got to like starve the fuck oh, out of myself. Yeah, and yeah. But now, like I look the best I ever have and I'm eating, you know, plenty of food and I'm not starving myself and I'm training, listening to my body because I'm just consistent with putting good, good food in, you know. Um, Consistency. Yeah, the they, they really, and, and again, not perfect, mm. but you've got to be more consistent than inconsistent, you know, like otherwise you, 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 your body won't heal and it won't change. And I think especially at the beginning when you've got a lot of healing to do, like, you know, like I'll, you, Mel doesn't drink at all, at all, hey, nope. ever, but I occasionally will have a cocktail, um, but it's okay, like my body can handle it and I don't suddenly blow out or go and eat a whole heap of shit mm. because I'm good. You know, like my metabolism's good, but I don't do it that often anymore. And mm. I think at the start, if you're trying to heal, or I think if you're someone who's got an addictive personality who's drinking perhaps to try and numb pain or, don't you reckon? Yeah, like, yeah. that's why you were always like, I've just, I know what I'm like. Yeah, God, just, go, yeah. just stop. Yeah, you've got while, to, you've got while to. You start, if, when you start this program and while you're doing the healing, because it's going to take time, don't fucking drink at all. Yeah, it, you give yourself the best chance possible. Yeah. And look, I get it, it can be hard, but you've got to ask yourself again, like, what's most important to you? Mm. You know, like, it's, like, I read all of the forms of the women who come into the program, like, they, they put their goals and this lady today, she was, had signed up and then she was telling Craig that she still wants to drink and, you know, and Craig's like, look, you can do whatever you want. But in your form, you said, I feel fat, frumpy, you know, tired. Yeah. Mm. My hormones are all out of whack. It's like, well, if you keep doing the same thing you've always done, how will anything ever change? Exactly. You know, yeah. and, it, and it really, you do have to make that commitment to yourself. But it's totally worth it. Like, you, you feel so much better. And it doesn't mean you won't ever drink again. Or maybe you but might be you, like Mel. If yeah. you do drink, like, what, think about why you're drinking. Because you're going to, mm. like, I myself, I love being drunk. I mm. love being high. Mm. Sometimes I think, oh, I'd love to be high right now. Then I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> what, what, so I would be high for two hours and then I would feel like shit for a week. Oh, I know. Like, they come down. And then my progress is just going to go backwards. It's not fucking worth it. Nah, no. totally. And you will find too if you cut it out and start to form those new habits and address those underlying issues, you'll get to the point where you're like, I can ha either not drink at all or I can mm. just go and have eight, one or two drinks like me. Like I'll have two and maximum three now and that's it. Yeah. And I'm good and I enjoy myself and, but it's not that frequent, you know, because mm. I always still don't sleep as good. But you feel like, yeah. you always say that yeah. you feel like shit the next yeah. day, even if you have one, you're totally. always screaming and be like, oh, I feel like shit. I can shit. feel it. <laughs> I can still feel it. Like it's, I think also because you're so unconditioned too. Yeah. It's amazing. If, and that makes you not want to do it mm -hmm. very often. Um, but like on Christmas Day, I'll get some nice champagne. I'll probably have a cocktail with mum and dad. And I'm like, whatever, you know, mm. it's one fucking day. You know, I might drink, you know, like five or six days out of the whole year and it'll be two or three drinks. Um, but once you're in a good spot, you can do that. Or you might not ever want to drink yeah. again. Like mm. there's also nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. But whatever choice you make, you have to accept and own that. Yeah. You know, if you're choosing to continue to drink and you're choosing to not give instance your food, you cannot expect that you're going to get these great results. Like, if you want to feel like shit and you're happy with how you are, own that shit yeah. and don't fucking whinge about it. 
you know. <laughs> or do something. <laughs> or do something, you know. <laughs> you know, so it really is as simple, as simple as that. And, you know, it may not be easy and you may fail a lot of times, but if you want it enough, you'll find a way and you'll make the change. So, Absolutely. So what now, Mel? Does it just go in That's the fridge? That's it. In the fridge. Oh, Done. that looks great. Done. And then you just slice it up. Then slice it up, put it in your gob and enjoy it. You know what? You could even do that with white chocolate, hey? You could do it with anything. We should yeah. make some white Christmas. I actually reckon. made one the other day with the sea salt chocolate mm. and the 70% chocolate. Oh, yum. The 90% and the 85% one. It oh. gave it a nice oh. big tang. I made a massive batch. Do you know what we should do? What should Let's we do? Let's make fucking white Christmas. Oh, yes. yeah. I've got some white chocolate, actually. Yes. Yeah, we'll make some. We'll come. Another episode. We'll make some fucking Christmas recipes. Right, right. Yeah, right. We'll ho, get, ho, ho. We'll, we'll get some Christmas hats and everything. Um, Can we'll, I be naked? Yeah, no, darling. Fuck, how many? She was asking if we were naked. I want to be naked. I'm like, we have to maintain some level of professionalism. Um, we're working on too, um, eventually building out a fucking easy food prep. It's in the works recipe book that you'll actually be able to buy from our website, which will be um, really cool with our best recipes, tested recipes that mm -hmm. we love. Um, liver tablets coming soon. So excited Ooh. about that for all the women that hate liver. But you've got to eat it because it's just so amazing. Passes Emma's stringent standards. Um, mm. So it'll be, you know, really top quality stuff. We've got a slightly smaller capsule too, so it's easier to swallow. Um, you know, like yeah. some people don't, like kids too. Because, mm. mm. you know, it's one different ones. And remember when she was researching, she ordered some to, to, to look at just different brands and what they were doing. And she, so a lot of the capsules were big, you know, really big and people couldn't swallow them. Fuck, I never used to be able to swallow tablets when I was a kid. Mm. I was one of those ones had to go like, crush, you know, the Panadol and, yeah. Uh, yeah, I never had that problem. Yeah. <laughs> she still doesn't. But anyway, we'll uh we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Okay, bye.